Church. At this time, brothers and sisters, I present unto you our dear pastor, our general overseer, the apostle, Gino Jennings. Thank you, brothers and sisters. You may be seated. Greetings, brothers and sisters. <laughs> we bear witness once again that there is one true living God. He is responsible for all of us that is present this afternoon here in Valdosa, Georgia. <clears throat> we thank him and him alone for his goodness to us all. It looks beautiful this afternoon to see the many brothers and sisters. I'm always grateful to have such good help of ministers that are present and the many that is throughout America and Canada and Africa and Europe and the Caribbean and Australia and New Zealand and so many places where the Lord is adding daily such as should be saved. Well, we have an announcement for Valdosa, Georgia. Starting Sunday, April the 16th, we will have service right here at the Rainwater Conference Center. <laughs> service will be every Sunday, 11 a.m. and 4 p.m at the Rose Garden Room. Service will be here at the Rainwater Conference Center here in Valdosa, Georgia. At the Rose Garden Room, service is 11 a.m. and again, 4 p.m. This will be the temporary location for the new Valdosa, Georgia First Church of our Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Think of it. Last night was our first night. 89 was baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Glory to God. Almost 100 souls the first night. If you can't beat it, you might as well join it. Brother Shabazz, are you feeling better? All right. Now, when you leave here, you lay off them pork chops. <laughs> and them pig ears and them pig knuckles. <laughs> we thank God for all of you that are here. God is good to the truth of God. <clears throat> and <clears throat> it is the Lord's doing that is certainly by all means marvelous in our eyes how we see the mighty hand of God moving from city to city, state to state, country to country. Let us remember that next month is our International Youth Conference. We hope everybody that's able to make it be there. And remember, Saturday at 3 o'clock, we will be having a mandatory church business meeting. We'll do a recap of that meeting, God willing, in July on our international holy convocation. Uh, remember also that Canada will be having their first Canadian holy convocation, I believe, in June. I've been in Canada several times, but this time we'll be having, they'll be having their first Canadian holy convocation. In September will be our first combined European Conference. All the truth of God follows throughout Europe. We'll be uh, holding our first conference there in the Netherlands for about three days. And believe me, they are eagerly waiting. And the wait time moving now in September will be here in no time. To all of my viewers in Alaska, God willing, we are looking to be there this summer. Not this winter. <laughs> God willing, we'll be there this summer in Alaska. Uh, 
to be there with the truth of God, brothers and sisters, there as well. So, <clears throat> as you can see, uh, brothers and sisters, everywhere the truth of God message goes, it's a good feeling to know that God is with you. You don't have to make up nothing. don't have to conjure up nothing. But the goodness of God to go to every city. You know, that's why I say I wish I was a multi-millionaire. I wouldn't leave town without buying a church. That's right. Be there if I'm there three days before I leave town, I'll be buying the church. Go to a false church while they're having service. Make a false prophet to offer to, to shut church down. Because no false prophet need a church. <clears throat> it's too dangerous when a false prophet is in the pulpit. Right. <clears throat> the danger is people's souls being destroyed. People being sadly used and abused. Right. All right, let me update you. Uh, oh, we have a three-week report. I've been on the go in other locations on job sites. So let me give uh, you this three-week report of baptisms. As I said, 89 here in Valdosta. That's so far. Hmm. That's just last night. Uh, 34 in headquarters, one in Pine Bush, New York, 14 in Bronx, seven in New Brunswick, New Jersey, seven in Del Mar, Delaware, 20 in Baltimore, one in Portsmouth, Virginia, two in Rocky Mount, two in Columbia, South Carolina, seven in Charleston, 10 in Augusta, Georgia, 10 in Miami, Florida, 10 in Orlando, Florida, two in Greensboro, Florida, one in Tallahassee, Florida, two in Jackson, Mississippi, three in Mobile, Alabama, 15 in Memphis, Tennessee, three in Monroe, three in Lafayette, Louisiana, 13 in Houston, two in San Antonio, Texas, 10 in Dallas, Texas, one in Liberty, Texas, 20 in Los Angeles, seven in Fresno, one in Gilroy, California, eight in Sacramento, 17 in Tooten, Massachusetts, five in Las Vegas, Nevada, four in Federal Way, Washington, 14 in Detroit, one in North Chicago, one in South Chicago, four in Minnesota, international baptisms, two in Germany, one in the Netherlands, one in Birmingham, England, nine in Toronto, Canada, three in, uh, is that Man Mantuba, Canada? I guess I'm saying it right. 19 in Sydney, Australia, two in, on the island of St. Lucia, three the island of Rodriguez, three in Cape Town, South Africa, 13 in Johannesburg, South Africa, three in Rashamdri, India, 11, and Kachi Korela, India. That's a total of 412 souls baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. All right, brothers and sisters, again, we're glad for the progress of the work of God. The new temple in Monroe, Louisiana is coming along beautiful. Uh, we'll be putting the new windows in there and the new doors and the painting is done. After that, the pews will be fastened back down, the cushions will be placed in, carpet will be laid. Then we'll be ready to dedicate the new temple in Monroe, Louisiana. <clears throat> To all the brothers and sisters in uh, Milwaukee, uh, the engineer, we was having the new temple repainted. That's all we had to do there was repaint and put new carpet. I wish that was that quick with all the places. But the uh, painting contractor went in there with the wrong equipment. The type of equipment he brought in is designed to be on solid concrete floors. But he brought it in on wooden floors and it caused, it was too heavy, which caused some of the beams to be damaged and cracked. 
Uh, and I would think that an experienced painter would know, bring scaffolds. Scaffolds on the wheels and then put the brakes on and to do the auditorium, but instead he brought the wrong kind of equipment and of course he tried to say that he didn't do it. But we got our engineer in there and got the brothers in there and had them all to meet at the same time and the engineer showed him his error. So I told him, well, your insurance is going to take care of it. Amen. <laughs> that's why when we hire outside contractors, <clears throat> I don't like to get handymen. I like to get those that are licensed and bonded. <laughs> that way they can, insurance can take care of whatever mess they make. So he was licensed and bonded and the insurance would take care of it once the engineer give the quote and give the proposal what have to be done then the engineer can correct their blunder and no money have to come out the church pockets. They can take care of it, then the painting <clears throat> can finally get done and the carpet can get laid. Then we can dedicate the Milwaukee, Wisconsin's temple. Also, we received the new blueprints of the draft for the new temple in Minnesota, Minneapolis, Minnesota. Uh, we have taken a staircase down and moved it to another side of the building. And then we have shifted everything around and uh, redesigned that, repositioned seating, and get that building up and running as well. Also, the pool is being dug and won't be for long to be complete in the new Johannesburg South African Temple. That's looking good as well. After that's done, the carpet is laid. We already put all the new central air in South Africa. I'm not an air-conditioner man. I'm not that fond of it. I don't like to sit on it, but it has to be real hot for me to turn it on. And believe me, brother, the moment you say Africa, that means air-conditioner. <laughs> so all the units are put in, and once that's done, carpet is, well, that's this done. So the carpet will be laid. We already picked the carpet out. We already picked the paint out. So all that's in the works. And God willing, we hope to have the new Johannesburg, South Africa temple dedicated. God willing, this year, God be our helper. We also bought a new headquarters temple, I believe, in downtown Africa of the island of Mauritius. We was blessed to buy a whole office building. We bought an entire office building, and uh, Bishop Simbali and the brothers is doing a good job working on that, and so we can make plans to dedicate that as well. One of the wonderful things about it, Milwaukee, we have no mortgage. Monroe, Louisiana, we have no mortgage. Johannesburg, South Africa, we have no mortgage. The new temple in Mauritius Islands, we have no mortgage. That's a blessing, isn't it? So we give God glory, give God thanks because he alone is making it possible. You don't have a minister that's still church money. No. Amen. You see where all the money is going. That's right. It's going right back to the people. And we're looking to expand in what we're doing. That's it. <clears throat> we want several temples per state. Not one in a state, several per state. And when we have several per state, then later on we'll have state conventions. And as each state in that region, as we set up temples in each state, then we have regional convocations where all the churches in the South come together, all the churches in the Midwest, all the churches in the Northwest, all the churches in the West Coast. So we're laboring. We're not somewhere sitting back twiddling our thumbs. We're laboring, working hard. And this is why we need good sound, humble brothers 
that can take in what's being taught That's right. like a sponge That's right. and uh, be humble with it and not try to claim the work to be theirs. That's right. But leave the work to who it belonged to, the Lord. The Lord says, upon this rock I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. That's right. All right, uh, this announcement here. The agricultural team is asking all available brothers from all temples to sign up to assist them in putting up the fence line for the Cardwell, Georgia property. We want all the brothers to help. We have uh, over 30 acres of land and we need all the brothers that's in the Georgia area or in the Carolina areas to uh, come together to the Cardwell, Georgia property. That's our farming property. We want to fence it all in. Keep the false prophets out. <laughs> you know, because false prophets are terrible. Oh, yeah. Start growing food. False prophet may come and try to burn down the crop. That's right. Them devils are something. <laughs> now, uh, for questions or to sign up, <clears throat> you can email First Church Rocky Mount at Mount. Is that your at? Mount at F-C-O-O-L-J-C dot org. Mount at <clears throat> F-C-O-O-L-J-C Doc Ord, uh, we, we thank you in advance. We need all the brothers' help that, that's not lazy. Hmm. Not afraid to roll up your sleeves and this is all for the work of God. That's right. All of it. Amen. As I've said before, I'm a firm believer, as Israel was, that the church be self-sufficient. It'd be a beautiful thing to be able to see all of them acres and acres of land and to see our own produce. We grow it, stock it, and uh, be able to give food to them that are hungry. That's right. And be able to stock our shelves and sell our own products and our own merchandise. That's right. Some people say, Pastor Jennings, you think too big. Then why don't you think that way when you go to Piggly Wiggly? <laughs> or go to Food Lion? Yes, All right. these businesses started with a thought. An idea. That's right. And then they came together, whether they got a loan or whatnot, but they put their resources together. Our objective is that we are self-sufficient. That's right. Depending upon nobody but God. Okay. As God manifests himself through all of us. That's right. And we look back years later. So the younger generation come behind us who will be too young to know the sweat and tears that was put into the development of the truth of God work. But they will have a, an appreciation because we can bear witness, we greatly appreciate what God is doing for us. Amen. Amen. They give us much joy, God knows. Oh, yes. All right. So remember, Valdosta, Georgia, that after the youth conference, April the 16th, service will be held at the Rose Garden Room, 11 a.m. and 4 p.m. will be the first, surface, first services of the new First Church of Our Lord Jesus Christ of Valdosta, Georgia. Making Georgia, we haven't forgot you. Give me some time, I'll get to you. Now, some of you have, have questions in reference to the cancellation of uh, the cancellation of the Atlanta, Georgia meeting. That was canceled not because we wanted to cancel, but the university where the meeting was going to be held. Uh, we had a very good sized room to hold the many hunters that would be there. But uh, at, at a late, they got in contact with our secretary and the students of the college uh, have to use that part of the building that we were going to rent. And it was absolutely too late to find something else. I like things done right. right. Not to find something rushed. You don't have time to let everybody know, then junk stuff together. No. 
No, I believe that all things should be done decently, decently, decently. and in order. Uh, so Atlanta, I will try my best to see what kind of space can I squeeze you in. <laughs> because the way the work have grown now, uh, the branch temples, uh, have you noticed, I don't hold services when I come in town too much at branch temples. Right. We can't hold the people. That's right. All of them are busting at the seams. And I feel good about it. Amen. Some of them say, Pastor Jennings, we need a new church here. I say, all right, that's nice. But right now, I'm focusing on areas that don't have none. Right. I'm pretty sure you can tolerate what you have until uh, we move you out. But right now, we have to focus on those that don't have any Amen. at all. That's right. All right, let's open up the book of pain. Amen. Dive into the Bible. Again, I greet all the brothers and sisters that are watching, and to my enemies also. I'm glad you're back. I'm glad that you're back. My heathens that are watching, <laughs> the wicked ones that are watching, the unbelievers that are watching, I'm glad that you're back. Amen. You ought to be back. Even some of them subscribe. Amen. Yes, I have enemies that subscribe all the time so they can learn the truth. Amen. And this is worth learning. All right, Williams, open your Bible anywhere. In the book of 2 Esther, chapter 7, and we'll start reading at verse 19. All right, follow me. And he said unto me, there is no judge above God. Do you hear that? Amen. Amen. There is no judge above God. Higher than God, and God knows that's the truth. That's right. God is the supreme judge. That's right. His judgment is always fair. Always fair. His judgment have no flaws. And one thing about his judgment, there's no favoritism involved. No. No. The judgment of God is without respect to person. That's right. And God's judgment, our judgment should be the same. Judge me, O Lord. Do you hear this? In the book of Psalms 26 and that verse 1. Notice what Brother David asks. Judge me, O Lord. Judge me, O Lord. For I have walked in my integrity. Everybody shall want God's judgment. God's judgment. In mercy. That's right. I welcome God's judgment. In mercy. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. I say like Logan. I remember. <laughs> And now I um, was talking about how many men have licenses, but that don't mean they can preach. <laughs> and I liken it unto many people that have licenses, that don't mean they can drive. <laughs> and I was cutting my eye at Mr. Williams. <laughs> and Brother Logan, he said, be nice, G. <laughs> That's right. He said, G, be nice. That's right. <laughs> yeah. When it comes to the judgment of God, I want God to be nice. Oh, yes. Because the judgment of God come in mercy yeah. and the judgment of God, hear me good, come in anger. That's right. Sometimes the judgment of God come in mercy and anger simultaneously. That's right. Let me give an example. In the days of Noah, the mercy or the judgment of God came in mercy and anger. And anger. Those that was obedient to the message in the days of Noah they experienced mercy. That's right. Because the judgment was the flood, but they benefit from the flood. Oh, yes. Because without the flood, the ark could not be set afloat. That's right. But those that reject the word of God that was preached by Noah and Methuselah. And Methuselah. Because the Lord our God gave man 120 years for self-correction. That's right. They suffered at the hands of God wrath. Now you had Sodom and Gomorrah. Yeah. The mercy of God was experienced by Lot in his household. That's right. But the terror of God was experienced by all those that reject the message. Amen. And reject God's will. That's right. The message that was brought by God through the angels. The, angels. the ones that hearkened to the message was Lot and this household, but even then, judgment 
hit the house of Lot. That's right. For the instructions was not to look back. To look back. But Lot's wife looked back and was turned to a pillow of salt. Of salt. She physically looked back. Yeah. When you look back, oh, yes. I don't mean physically, but mentally, emotionally. Yeah. The scripture says this about Israel. In their heart, they turned back again into Egypt. Into Egypt. In the heart. In your heart. In now, heart. hear me good, let me soak you. You always want to avoid God's anger, God's wrath. That's right. And you always want to welcome God's mercy. Oh, yes. But you never want to take for granted God's mercy. That's right. And you never want to play with God's mercy. That's right. And you never want to misuse or abuse God's mercy. Remember, O oh Lord. Hear this. In Psalms 25 and verse 6. Remember, O Lord, thy tender mercies. Remember, Remember. O Lord. Thy tender mercies. Hold it. Mm. Why is mercy called tender? Tender. So you get the language of the book. Amen. Notice the prophet didn't say do what? Remember, O Lord. Remember, O Lord. Thy tender mercy. He didn't say remember your mercy. No. Tender mercy. Certain kind. That's right. That's Certain right. kind of mercy. Tender mercies. Tender. Now, Tender. Hear, hear me good. You cannot handle a new plant that's sticking out the ground like you do a tree. That's right. That's right. What do you mean, Pastor Jennings? You cannot apply the same force. Mm -hmm. If you got a tender plant, sometimes too much force can break the plant, kill the plant too fast, that's right. too quick, because you're not paying attention to the force that's applied. That's right. But a good sound tree that's been up there for years, if you want to remove that tree, you may have to get some machinery. Push it down, push it over. That's right. Get something to grind the stump down. So I welcome God tender mercy. Tender, tender mercy. If you have to reprimand me. That's right. Don't apply so much force. That's right. Do you get me? Amen. If you have to correct me, don't apply so much force. That's right. Wherein I'm lost. That's right. Damn, destroyed. destroyed. If you apply force, fine, but with the force that you use, yeah. break me, but make me. That's right. Are you getting me? That's right. Every form of punishment. There's some form of application of force. Amen. Some force is more ease than others, even in words. Yeah. One scripture says, how forcible are right words. Are right words. Right words. Sometimes forcible speech is misinterpreted for anger. That's right. Hatred. That's what they say about me all the time over the air. He's the meanest man I ever seen. No, I'm not. <laughs> Amen. I'm a pretty nice guy. Yes, you what are. What do you think, Will? I think you're pretty good, Pastor. Well, I thank God for that. Amen. <laughs> a lot of time when you sound strong, outspoken, unafraid. That's right. You're not a religious Uncle Tom. That's it. You're not associated with Uncle Ruckus. Amen. Bowing to the powers that be. That's right. But you stand up. Stand up. Stand firm, up. Firm. Yeah. Solid. 
uncompromising, not deterred That's by right. nothing and nobody. That's right. Don't bow to no government yeah. that pose threats or make sanctions. That's right. To break you, make you less than a man. Amen. You refuse to let other religions castrate God away from you. That's right. That's Wonderful. Right. You stand up against threats of all kinds. Who will rise up for me? Right then. That's right. You mean? Hateful, yeah. angry, unloving. Unloving. They'll look at you and say, oh, I feel sorry for the woman that's married to him. Yeah, yes, they will. <laughs> that's right. Because all they see is me up here. Right. Yeah, yeah. They don't know Pastor Jenny. Not no. Not at all. You don't know PJ and you don't know G now. <laughs> that's right. You don't know them. That's right. They see me up here. That's what they see. That's what they see. So they say he's a cult leader, he's a tyrant. One man say, my only problem with that Geno Jennings, he's mean all the time, and his delivery is always aggressive. <laughs> they don't say that about Satan. No. No, they don't. They don't say that about Satan at all. No, they don't. But when you stand up against Satan yeah. and the belief system of Satan, that's right. And when you denounce Satan, tries to make himself a rival yeah. against the only one true living God. When you stand up unafraid, unafraid. the so-called Christian community, yeah. who the majority of them are Bible. Carrying cowards. That's right. Am I right, I say? Amen. From pulpit down. That's right. All you got to do is offer them a couple of dollars. A couple of dollars. And they will turn their back on God, denounce God, give up on God because they are easy to be bought. That's right. That's right. God wants soldiers for him. That's right. Until the word of God says, endure hardness as a good soldier. As a good soldier. A good soldier. Nobody in the military yeah. is treated tenderly. <laughs> no, no. I don't care if a woman joined the military. Mm -hmm. You ain't going there in no pink ballerina shoes. No. No pink ballet dress. Oh no. You got to put them boots on. That's right. I don't care how feminine you are when you got to run through them tires. Amen. That sergeant ain't looking at you going through there. Oh my goodness. Oh, oh, oh my goodness. Oh, 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 oh my goodness. No, no. You can't do that. No, no. No way. So anybody expect to be treated tenderly. tenderly in the military it's best you stay home that's right now God's church is an army it's an army and God is the head of the church that's right. head of this army that's right every soldier must Go through boot camp. boot camp. And boot camp is everyday life experience. That's right. The scriptures is simply a guide to guide us through life and prepare us how to handle life, that which is expected and that which is unexpected. That's right. In the military, you must pace yourself. Oh, yes. And the sergeant is going to push you. Oh, yeah. You climb up that rope ladder, jump over that wall, he's going to be right behind you like a pit bull. That's right. What's the matter with you, Williams? Can't you move faster than that? That's right. Do you need me to get your mommy? <laughs> Amen. That's right. 
He attacked your mind. What is he doing? Building you up psychologically. Yeah. Boot camp is designed to condition your body. That's right. To make all that unit be one. That's right. God come along and do the same thing. Glory to God with scripture. That's right. He attacks the mind and says, let this mind be in you that's also in Christ Jesus. Now, our mind needs to be utterly destroyed. destroyed. Am I right, I said? Amen. Some of the trouble we get in is because the way we think. That's right. The way we think bring about confrontation, argument, and quick to judge. That's right. We quick to judge before we have the right information. Oh, that's right. So God, through scripture, come to condition our mind to strengthen the weakness of our mind. Let go from the mortal thoughts. Listen. In the book of 2nd Esther, chapter 14 and verse 14. Let go from, from the, the mortal thoughts. Mortal or carnal thinking. Cast away the burdens of man. Cast away the burdens of man. Put off now the weak nature. Put it off. Put it off. Amen. Put off now the weak nature. Our weak nature. Our weak way of thinking is a contributing factor to our house, our temple being weak. That's right. So the scriptures come to fortify our way of thinking. Yeah. That way when we hear false teaching, false concepts, That's right. the ideology of men, yeah. we're not swayed by it, we're not deterred by it, That's right. and we're not influenced by it, and we don't run after it. That's right. Weak mind, your weak mind is a threat to yourself. Amen. When you're weak minded, weak minded, your eternal life with God is in jeopardy. That's right. A person stays with God as long as the soundness of the mind is in place. That's right. When the mind starts getting less and less and less sound, yeah. then the word of God said the lust of, inter th of other, other things, things enter in, Choke chokes the word. word. That's Choke. what the word of God said. That's right. And we become unfruitful. 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 What bring about us being so non productive? Yeah. Many times it's the company that we keep. That's right. I often say this, if a person is motivated to get things accomplished for self, like someone who wants to start their own business, he or she cannot afford to be around anyone, if I use a term, that's a dream killer. Amen. A hope killer. Yeah. Because they may try to start a business and it didn't work. That don't mean I'm going to fail because you failed. That's right. My approach may be different. And my outlook on things may be different. Yeah. And my support system might be different. Amen. Listen at this. Now in the book of St. Mark, chapter 4 and verse 19. What is it? And the cares of this world uh -huh. and the deceitfulness of riches. The cares of this The attraction, world. the want, the lust. That's right. Of this world and the trickery. Of riches. The trickery of what? Of riches. Deceit. The cares of this world and what? The cares of this world and the deceitfulness. And the deceitfulness. Of riches. Riches can deceive you. Yes, they can. When riches have you and you don't have it, you become deceived. Deceived. Notice what I said. 
Because God can make you rich. That's right. Abraham was a rich man. Oh, yeah. So was Job. It was Job. Many of them in the Old Testament was wealthy. Yeah. The difference was the fear of God was in their life. That's right. Not like people today. No. So the, the, the deceitfulness the of riches. Deceitful. When your riches possess you and you no longer possess them, right. they will deceive you. They will trick you to the degree they start reshaping your character. Yes, they will. Not for the better, but for the worse. That's right. But now you think you're something when you're nothing. <laughs> Amen. Hear this now. And the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and what? And the lust of other things. Wait a minute. Mm. The lust of other things. Of other things, entering what happens? In, entering in. It comes in you, and what does it do? Choke the word. Hold it. Amen. It chokes information. That's right. That's right. It chokes the word. It chokes the information that been sown in your heart. That's right. Choke it. Choke it. Your heart that was emotionally connected to God. Your distraction of other things choke that emotion. So now you're not emotionally tied to God like you used to. No. The mind that you had, hear me good, right. towards God, the lust of other things now enter in Entering and in. choke the way you think. That's right. So now your thoughts towards heaven, Lord, take God, is no longer like it used to be. That's right. That's right. Your thought process now is being choked. Yeah. When the mind is choked and the heart is choked, the body. Oh, yeah. And the performance of the deeds of God, that becomes choked. Right. Everything about your house is altered. Amen. So now your foundation is in jeopardy. Oh, yeah. I'm a man that deals in real estate and dealt in real estate for probably 30 years or more than 30 years. I love architect and building and designing. Just a gift that God gave me. I never went to school for it. It just gave me an ability to design. I start off designing clothing, suits and coats and shirts and all of that stuff. Amen. I understood material and material that people didn't think worked. I look at it and make it work. Mm -hmm. Then I understood levels of concrete and steel and grout and roofing and everything. Wonderful. It just came natural for me. Wonderful. And then spiritually, God made me a builder. Oh, yeah. Because we're building a people. That's right. Amen. Don't you know that you're God's building? God's building. You're lively stones, and God has made me a mason. <laughs> That's right. Amen. And, I, and you have to fit in the building right. Fit in That's it. why you find me work on some of you. I got to work on harder than others because you're trying to get on the wall that's put up by a plumb line. That's right. And many of you, your edges are not sharp. Your edges are not plumb. It's somewhat jagged. And I got to take the hammer of the scripture and chisel the devil off of you. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. That's right. Amen. Amen. So everybody can get in that one wall. One wall. Glory to God. That one house. That's right. That's being built by the Lord Jesus Christ. So I'm a mason. Mason. I'm not Scottish Rite or Prince Hall. No. Glory to God. No. But I am a mason. That's right. Amen. Cutting and chiseling and shaping and forming a people. That's right. By the tools of scripture. That's it. Amen. I, I use a hammer yeah. because some of you is very stubborn. I got to hit your heart with the Bible. Hit your heart. I use an axe because many of you can't cut it loose from that thing that got you tied. And an axe is necessary because that thing is nurturing yeah. you. That's why the axe is laid yeah, at the, the roots. roots. If I hit the roots that kill you being nurtured by it. That's right. Then I have to go get my sword, sword. because you connected the stuff that you shouldn't be connected to, and I have to sever ties. That's right. Amen. And everyone that get hit, holler. <laughs> Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Listen. And the cares of this world. The cares. Cares of this world. Of this world. And the deceitfulness and of the riches. the tricks, the deceitfulness of riches enter in. And the lust of other lust things. Lust of other things. Entering in. What does it do to us? Choke the word. And how does it affect us? And it becometh unfruitful. Hold it. Amen. It becomes what? Unfruitful. Now, 
if it becomes unfruitful, unfruitful, we got to find out what are those fruits in the book of Galatians chapter that five. We're no longer producing. That's right. If we become unfruitful, unfruitful, now we got to find out what is it that we're not producing. That's right. Because we are plants. Oh yes. And the word of God said, those plants that my heavenly father have not planted shall be rooted up. That's right. Listen at the fruits in the book of that Galatians. we got to have that's affected that's right. by our distraction of the world. That's right. Follow me. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 22. What is it? But the fruit of the spirit. The fruit of a thing is the results of planting. That's right. We plant scripture. Amen. It's written, the seed, the sower, soweth the, sower the word. You know, our farmer practiced husbandry. Yeah. That's what God is called, the husbandman. Husband here, here now. But God here, mm -hmm. God is the husbandman, the farmer. And the son of God was the seed. That's right. Is that Bible? 15 chapter St. John, Saint verse John. 1. St. John chapter 15 and that verse 1. Says what? I am the true vine. I am. True vine. Son of God talking. Amen. I am the true vine. I am the plant. And my father. And my father, the spirit. Is the husband man. He's responsible for me being planted. That's right. That's right. Until the son of God is caught by the prophet. Tender plant. Tender plant. And root out of dry ground. Dry ground. So here is the Lord planting scripture. Scriptures. Planting his word in his church. That's right. Uh, that's why the church is growing. That's right. Yeah, if it ain't no planting of the Lord, don't look for no growth. Amen. Anybody that have a plant, Amen. that plant needs light and darkness. Yeah. Did you hear me? Oh, yes. That plant needs light and darkness. You have indoor plants. And outdoor plants. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when you have an indoor plant and it's outdoors and the weather starts change, sometimes the individual will get some type of burlap bag or something to cover the plant. That's right. Because it's too cold. The cold may kill the plant. Mm -hmm. When I go to Jamaica or Barbados or Trinidad or Cayman Islands or the Bahamas, anywhere in the Caribbean, I always love to look at the different tropical plants. Amen. Go down to Florida and look at the big palm trees. You can't have no palm trees in Philadelphia in <laughs> no, December. No way. Unless they fake. <laughs> That's right. I've been to Florida in January and February. That's right. And I see all them palm trees. And I say, oh, I wish I can just uproot them. <laughs> Take them back to Philadelphia. There have been some houses in Philadelphia who had palm trees fake. <laughs> in other words, they want to keep the greenery all year round, even if it's hypocrite greenery. That's right. Well, the Lord want to plant something real. Real. Now, That's right. some of you think I'm too hard, too strict, too tough. Yeah. But every tree need pruning. Oh, yes. So I have to come with the cutting of scripture to prune you. Prune you. <laughs> That's right. Are you getting me, Williams? That's right. All of us, hear me good, need pruning. That's right. If you get a rose bush, certain period of time, you prune it. Yeah. Then later on, you look at it, that bush is more fuller, more bigger. Look beautiful than it ever did. That's right. In other words, you gave it a haircut. That's right. For those of you that don't know what pruning is, Amen. give it a haircut. Give it a haircut. Get rid of all the dead ends. That's right. That's what we need, pruning. Pruning. Sometimes when you don't prune a bush, you notice it grows in spots. But when you prune the whole bush, the whole thing, glory to God, looks beautiful. That's right. 
many of us, we want to be pruned in spots, and that's very little. Very little. But if you want your mind, heart, body, soul, spirit to thoroughly flourish in God, then the entire being, everything about yourself, need to go through scriptural pruning. That's right. That you may flourish in the full capacity That's that it. God permits you to flourish. That's right. That's right. How is it you claim you want to be everything that God wants you to be, but afraid to be pruned? Amen. What is pruning, Pastor Jennings? Pruning. Give me the book of Hebrews. Mm -hmm. We're in all the partakers. All the partakers. In the I book want of to Hebrews. show you what scriptural pruning is. In the book of Hebrews, chapter 12, we'll start go at verse 5. To God. Hebrews, chapter 12, we're at verse 5. Hear me good now. And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. Yes. My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord. My son... Don't despise, don't reject God's chastening. Nor faint, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. When you are pruned of him. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth. When you love a plant, That's right. you take care of it. Take care of it. When you love a plant, you prune it. That's right. You want your grounds that look as good as it can look. That's right. Now, when you prune that plant and then you're done. It don't have an attractive look. Amen. When it's done. Yeah. Sometimes you stand back and look at it and be like, oh, did I do it right? Hmm. Oh, that's an ugly looking son. That's right. Then when the weather starts to change. That's right. You wait for it. That's right. And then those flowers start budding and bursting open. Yeah. Give you joy, put a smile on your face. That's right. You're like, oh man, that thing is beautiful. You go get your phone and take a picture of it. That's right. That's right. The process of pruning, self pruning, self pruning, is for the expansion internally and externally of your being. That's right. Without pruning, you can't even be a proper help to yourself. Without pruning, you are incompetent to be a help to your brother or your sister. In the book of Isaiah chapter 5 and at verse 6. You keep pruning that bush or that tree, won't be full long. That tree can supply you something it couldn't. It's right. called shade. That's right. It can give you deliverance from the heat. From the heat. Without proper pruning as church, right. you cannot properly be a help one to the other because without pruning, you are incompetent. And that's why your growth is not total growth, it's just spurks. That's right. Spurks. Isaiah chapter 5. So you're not fully developed. You didn't fully blossom. You didn't fully Bloom. Mm. And that's why many of us are still struggling and holding on to certain things because we are scared of that thing to be cut from us. That's right. That's right. Pruning is the cutting of the dead part. That's right. Of that. Did you hear what I said? Amen. You're not cutting the part that's good. No. You're cutting the dead part. The dead part. You want to get rid of the dead man. That's right. That's it. The scriptures is not coming to correct the part of you that's already correct. No. But it come to prove the dead part. The dead part. She that lives in pleasure is dead wow, while she, she lives. That's right. It comes to cut all the sin. Yeah. Glory to God. That's right. That's right. And you can see the results yeah. when God prunes his church. Oh, yes. Each year, the field get bigger. 
right. and bigger that's right. and bigger and more colorful. Color, that's right. But without pruning, that's right. You will not have a church that grows. And I will lay it waste. Do you hear this? In the book of Isaiah, chapter 5 and at verse 6. I will lay waste. And I will lay it waste. It shall not be pruned. Do you hear it? Amen. It shall not be pruned. Nor digged. Nor digged. But there shall come up briars and thorns. There shall come up briars and thorns. And thorns. Meaning what shall come up will not be good for usage. That's right. Are you getting what I'm telling you? Amen. Glory to God. Back in Hebrews 12 and verse 5. Follow me. And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord. Nor what? Nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. Uh -huh. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth. Whom the Lord loveth, he chaste and scourgeth every son. He lay everybody out. Whom he receiveth. <laughs> every son. Everybody. Every son. As the Lord lay you out, he most certainly does. <laughs> That's right. When the word of God is preached, it hits me. Oh, yeah. Someone said, but I can't tell. You don't have to. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Not only can I tell, I can feel it. Feel it. Amen. Amen. But God didn't make me a coward, so I don't shun it. Right. And I don't run from it. I ran to it. Wonderful. I submit myself to the pruning of the Lord because in every aspect of God, I want to flourish and blossom so I stay around the plant food. That's right. Not only do I stay around the plant food, I want the light of God. Yes. I need the plant food and the light of God, just like plants need to be nurtured and they need the sun. That's right. The light of God is the wisdom of God, the knowledge of God that pulls me from darkness. Amen. That I may enjoy the marvelous, hallelujah, marvelous light of the gospel. That's Are right. you getting this? Amen. Go back to the foundation of the thing. Come on, Williams. Back in 2 Esther chapter 7. Yes. Back in 2 Esther chapter 7 and at verse 19. I want to take my time and soak you a little. Second Esther 7 and verse 19. All right. And he said unto me, there is no judge above God. There is no judge higher than God. And none that hath understanding above the highest. Oh. None. Nobody understanding exceeds the Lord. That's right. I don't care who they are, how deep they are, their religious or educational background, their understanding will never, never, ever exceed the Lord's understanding. No way. His understanding is perfect about everything. That's right. His understanding is flawless about everything. Yeah. He have no errors. He have no equals. He have no rivals. He have no partners. He have no associates. He is God alone. God is not begotten. That's right. I want to say, wait a minute, G Pastor Jennings. You preach Jesus Christ as God. That's right, but God was not begotten. God is not begotten. The spirit of Christ that was in that man, that was God. That's it. The thing that was begotten was the man. That's right. Not God. Not God. Yeah. For there be many that perish in this life. Hear this. Amen. There be, there be many, many that a whole perish, lot. That perish. That perish, that will be destroyed. In this life. Right here. Because. Why? They despise the law of God that is set before them. Amen. Despise. Why are they going to hell? They despise the law of God that is set before them. That's why the preachers have took their hands off the people. That's right. Preachers despise the law despise. of God just as much as the, as the people or not more. Amen. They despise it. They, they hate it. That's right. They reject it. That's right. Turn away from God's counsel. Turn away from it. And lean to their own rotten and no good understanding. Amen. Do you hear this? For there be many that perish in this life. Many that perish right here. Because they despise, they despise the law of God. God's law. That is set before that us. That is set before us. For God has given straight commandment. Wait a minute. What kind of commandments did he give? Straight commandment. What direction are they in? Straight commandment. Amen. Straight, straight. orders is designed for a straight and narrow way. That's right. Straight commandments is given to a crooked people. 
That, that's right. <laughs> that's right. Amen. Did you hear me? Amen. Straight, Straight. commandments yeah. are given for and to two. a crooked people that's right. to raise them up from a crooked nature. Nature. To a straight nature. That's right. For the Lord said he made man to be upright. Upright. That's right. Are you listening? That's right. So God wants man to be upright. Upright. And you can't have a crooked law. <laughs> no. A crooked law, a crooked teaching, crooked concepts. Amen. Keep that people crooked, separated from God. Never connected to God connected. and destroyed. That's right. Straight teaching. Straight. It takes straight teaching to keep me on a straight path. Amen. Straight teaching is the teaching of God unfiltered. That's right. Not mixed with men's ideology. That's right. Nobody's opinion, nobody idea, nothing. Nothing. You know, some men go to the bar. They tell the bartender, give me a shot of vodka. Straight. Straight. No mixing. <laughs> That's right. No, no mixing. No mixing. Give him that vodka. And you can tell it's straight too, brother. <laughs> Just look at his face when you take it. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Then they say, Hit me again. Hit me again. You want another? <sighs> That's right. <laughs> Straight. Straight. He feel it going down. Oh, yeah. And it's burning. Oh, yeah. But his love for it and his lust for it He's so dedicated until he's willing to suffer the pain of what he loves. That's right. You would do that for liquor, yeah. but you won't do it for God. That's right. That's right. God's word is given to us to digest to go down within our soul. Oh, yes. As it travel down to go to our heart, there's pain involved. That's right. That's why sometimes you leave church angry, think your minister's picking with you. Yeah. Because the message is brought and you're guilty. Yeah. And you say, oh, wait a minute. He talking about me. Why well, well, I feel like it's so personal? You should. You should. You hear the word of God, you better take it personal. That's right. That's right. Take it straight. Take it straight. Take the word of God straight. Take it straight. Amen. Hallelujah. When you come here and your brother is up. I ain't gonna ask you what you want. No. I'm gonna set your glass up. Amen. Let's just come on, bring your stool up to the counter. That's right. Because you know what you know what Pastor Jennings is serving. Oh yes. Oh yes. Straight gospel. Straight gospel. Straight drink. That's right. That's right. What's the name of that drink, Pastor Jennings? Give up your second wife drink. Oh. <laughs> I gotta do what? Yeah, I gotta give up my your second wife drink. That's it. <sighs> yeah. uh. That's strong. That's strong. That's right. What? what? Got another one for you. What's this? You ain't baptized right. That's right. What? Yeah, you, you, you drink this. Drink it. This is the name of Jesus Christ's baptism. <laughs> That's right. Just as the tree yeah. and the shrub 
do not fight the one that prunes it. Right. Are you listening? That's right. No shrub, no tree fight or rebels the one that prunes it. No. Some men needs a ladder to prune that tree. And some of you feel exhausted like a tree. Like a tree. But you ain't too high for God to reach you. That's right. So all of us from pulpit down, hear me good, and you that are watching, oh, yes. need the pruning of the scripture. Oh, yes. You love these sugar daddy preachers because they use fake tools. That's why you never get pruned. That's right. That's why you're still church alcoholics. Amen. Still church cigarette suckers. Yeah. Oh, yes. And some of you in the truth. Don't want to be pruned because you don't want to cut off That's right. and cut away from your sins. That's right. That's right. But if you really want to be all you can be, all you can be. in God, yeah. you must subject yourself to the removal of the dead self. Dead self. That's right. Bush and shrubs that get pruned is the removal of the dead parts. That's right. Can you not identify the dead parts in your life? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. You don't need me to tell you. No. You live with yourself 24-7. That's right. This is the greenhouse. The greenhouse. Where each plant must get individual attention. That's right. But every brother and every sister who wants to be something for God yeah. must subject themselves oh, yes. to the pruning, the cutting away, cutting away. of self yeah. by Scripture. That's right. What did the Word of God say there? For chapter God, and verse again. Back in 2nd Esther chapter 7 and verse 21. What is it? For God has given straight commandment. God has given straight commandment. To, to such as came. To such as came. As came. As came. What they should do to live. What? Wait a minute. Mm. God gave straight commandments. To such as came. As such as came. What they should do to live. What you should do to live. Even as they came. Even as they came. And what they should observe to avoid punishment. God gave clear instructions. Clear instructions. What to do? That's right. So I can live. That's right. What to do? So I can avoid punishment. Punishment. Straight command. The American government and the governments of the world. God gave straight commands. Straight commands. Some of you post many of those commandments in your courthouse. Mm. Thou shall not do this. Thou shall not do that. Thou shall not do the other. That's right. But you regard the thinking of man and get pushed aside the commandment of God. That's right. You Nevertheless. See, God commandments make you straight. Yes, they will. It's a plumb line. That's right. I ain't seen nobody can walk a balance beam if they're extremely wing-footed or bow-legged. Hmm. You walk a balance beam, not like you do the floor. No. When you first get on there, somebody got to hold your hand to keep you up. That's right. Your feet is not side by side. Your feet is in front of each other. That's right. And you're wobbling. Oh. Because it's too straight for your temple. Too straight. In order to bring balance and master the beam, you need training? Yes. And in the midst of your training, that beam going to hurt you. Yes, it will. You're going to slip off of it. That's right. Fall off of it. Fall off of it. But someone who's aimed to master the beam, they're going to come right back. Oh, yeah. Because they want to accomplish 
and they want to master that beam until they can walk it now without help. That's right. So now they're not only walking it, they're flipping on it. Amen. They're stable now. Yeah. They have familiarized themselves so good, so good. until now they're not threatened by the beam. That's they're right. They're not intimidated by it. That's right. God law is a straight law. Straight. That many of us are intimidated by. Amen. Because you're being told forcefully That's right. what God wants. Oh, yeah. Do you hear what he just read? Second Esther 7 and verse 21. Says what? For God has given straight commandment to such as Cain. What is the position of the commandment? Straight commandment. Straight and narrow is the way to lead the life. Oh, yes. Few that be that fine. Few. God is the way to lead to destruction. Many that be that go in their act. That's right. God has given straight commandments. God has given straight commandments to such as Cain. To such as Cain. And what they should do to live. What they should do to, 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 to live. To, to live. To live. <laughs> Got stuck there, Pastor. Got stuck. <laughs> you all right now? All right. God didn't give us commandments to get stuck. <laughs> no. Glory to God. Come on, Will. What they should do to live. Yeah. Even as they came. Uh -huh. And what they should observe to avoid punishment. Wait a minute. To observe. Observe. To avoid. To avoid punishment. Give me Joshua. Joshua. 1, 7 and 8. Mm -hmm. And give me Matthew. Mm -hmm. 28 and 20. Joshua chapter 1. I want you one. to focus on the word observe. Observe. Notice it is given that we may observe destruction, that we may... Uh, what they should observe, observe to avoid to punishment. avoid punishment. Avoid you want punishment. to avoid destruction, avoid punishment, but you got to observe. That's right. Now listen at Joshua. Joshua chapter 1, verses 7 and 8. And I want to balance this out with Matthew 28, 20. Amen. Listen. Only be thou strong and very courageous. Be thou strong, thank God, and... Very courageous. That thou mayest observe. That thou mayest observe. Observe to do. To do. According to all the law. According to all the law. Which Moses my servant commanded thee. Then what? Turn not from it to the right hand or to the Don't left. Don't turn from the left nor to the right. But to observe to do according to all, all. what God ordered. That's right. That's right. If it says don't turn to the left nor to the right, he's telling you, don't you be unstable with my law. That, that's right. Hallelujah. Don't be unstable with God's law. That's right. For nobody. That's right. Wonderful. Get me. Only be thou strong and very courageous. Be strong in God's law. Amen. Amen. And be courageous. Be brave in it. That thou mayest observe to do. That you may observe to do. According to all the law. Glory which, to God according to all the law. Which Moses my servant which commanded Moses, thee. Moses my servant gave you. Turn not from it to the right hand. Don't be wishy-washy with it. Or to the left. What? That thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. Now, if you're not unstable with God's law, yeah. what are the benefits? That thou mayest prosper. How whither, often? Whithersoever thou goest. Do you see that, church? That's right. Wherever you go, Wherever. glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You are prosper. Prosper. Don't go to the left. Don't go to the right. That's right. Stay on the straight path. Hallelujah. And he said what? That thou mayest prosper. That thou mayest prosper. Whithersoever thou goest. Wherever you go. That's right. Uh -huh. This book of the law. What? This book of the law. What I got to observe? This book of the law. What I got to stay in? This book of the law. What I got to pay attention to? This book of the law. What I got to submit to? This book of the law. What I got to obey? This book of the law. How must I pay attention to the book? Shall not depart out of thy mouth. But what should I do? But thou shalt meditate there. How often? Day and night. Hallelujah. 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 Meditate how long? Day and night. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This book of the this law. This book of the law. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. When you hear the word of God, Hallelujah. even when you're watching it at home, Sometimes it's good to get to yourself. That's right. Meditate on it. That's right. Hallelujah. Think about it. Hallelujah. And let the word of God be a searchlight to your soul. That's right. That's right. Take it straight. Hallelujah. Straight. Go with it. Hallelujah. Take it straight, I said. That's right. Straight. Thank God, whatever the word of God hit, don't be a coward and run from it. That's right. Take it straight. Take it straight. Hallelujah. You viewers, you go to churches that serve your Kool-Aid. <laughs> That's right. Mm-hmm. Tang and orange juice and <laughs> Nestle Quick. Amen. Amen. Gatorade, something that don't bother you. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. We come along with strong scripture. Strong scripture. Full of spirit. That's right. Give it to you straight, not mixed with nothing. Not mixed. Straight truth. Oh, yes. Solid. It's good for you. That's right. Run the sin out of your system. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. That's right. Amen. You know, when that body ain't doing what it's supposed to do, you take <laughs> something straight. Straight. To move all that waste out of you. Amen. Sometimes what you take don't taste good either. Oh, no. But you take it straight, and then you feel lighter than you ever felt. <laughs> you feel like going on with Jesus. <laughs> Glory to God. That's right. Come on, Williams. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. This book of the law shall not leave your mouth. But thou shalt meditate therein day and night. Meditate. Amen. This is why some of us are not mindful of what the word of God says. Can't even remember. Can't remember it. But if we watch a movie, we can remember what each actor says. That's right. We remember his line, his script, as if, he, as if you wrote it yourself. That's right. We are more interested, more eager, yeah. talking back to the television. <laughs> don't you go there, don't you run. Look out, girl. Look out behind you, look out behind you. That's right. No, nobody. <laughs> they don't see you. Amen. But you're so into it until into when they're fighting and running, you in your chair, <laughs> biting your lip. That's right. Making noise. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> oh, my God, run, run. That's right. What a God being preached. So are you. So, that's right. Well, Pastor Jenner, it's a horror movie. You living a horrible life. <laughs> that's right. Amen. This is reality TV that's here. Reality. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Nothing in this life should be more interesting yeah. than God. Right. And your relationship with God. That's right. I'm inclined to believe that many of us have forgotten that we are in a relationship with God. Yeah. 
He is our father. father. We are his sons and daughters. That's right. So in that relationship, you want to keep it. Oh, yeah. Oh, if yes. God reject you as his son and as his daughter, and someone else accept you, the acceptance of others and the rejection of God, the acceptance of others don't mean nothing. That's right. When God reject you and someone accept you, their acceptance have no power. No. Are you listening? That's right. That's right. Listen at this. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. By the way, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. What shall we do? That thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. Wait a minute. How much we got to do? Observe to do according to all that is written therein. And if we do this, what did God promise us? For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous. And then wait, wait, wait. Amen. Our way would be what? Thou shalt make thy way prosperous. And how good would it be? And then thou shalt have good success. Is Amen. that plain? Oh, yeah. oh, yes. But these things, again, are given on terms. Terms. What did Ezra say? Back in 2nd Esther 7 and verse 21. Esther say what? For God has given straight commandment to such as came. You have given straight commandments to such that have came. What they should do what to they live. do to live. Even as they came. Even as they came. And what they should observe. And what they should observe. To avoid punishment. To avoid punishment. Nevertheless. Nevertheless. They were not obedient unto him. But what? But spake against him and imagined vain things. Speak against him. And imagine vain things. All right, let's finish up observation. Matthew 20, or rather... 28. 28. And 20. verse 20. All right, yes. Same Matthew, Matthew 20, chapter 28, 20. 28 and I verse 20. I said 19, 20, didn't I? No, I don't think you said that, Pastor. I think I said that. If I did, I, I, that, I didn't mean to say that. 28, 20. Right. All right. Same Matthew chapter 28 and verse 20. Yes. Teaching them... Now he's telling his apostles... Amen. ...to teach the church... ...to observe... How much? ...all things... Whatsoever I have commanded you. And then what he promised. And lo, I am with you always. Even. Even unto the end of the world. Amen. What more can you ask? What more can you ask? So this is why, yeah, make good, we labor. Oh, yeah. Consistently in the scriptures. Yeah. To teach you to observe everything that the Lord says. That's right. Teach you to observe Everything that oh. the Lord says that you may prosper. That's right. And have good success. That's right. And don't narrow prosperity down to materialism. No. I want to prosper spiritually before I prosper naturally. Yeah. Yes. And I don't want me to prosper naturally right. until it distracts me spiritually. That's right. I don't want to prosper naturally then I Fail spiritually. That's right. That's right. Do you get me? Amen. Get back to Ezra. Back in 2nd Esther 7 and verse 22. Follow me. Nevertheless, they were not obedient unto him. What? Nevertheless, they were not obedient unto him. Yeah, nevertheless. Yeah. People were not obedient unto him. Not They're not obedient. obedient now. That's right. This is a hard, a hard oh, hit yeah. world. Oh, yes. The world is hard hit, oh, stubborn, full of hell, full of the devil, rebellious. That's right. Everything, practically everywhere, hate God. That's right. That's and right. they hate you if you stand up for God. Yes, they will. But yeah. I want to encourage everybody respect God's law, respect God's commandment. God said he commanded all men everywhere to repent. To repent. All men. All men. Everybody. I don't care if you're so white, you look like a uh, flower. <laughs> Amen. That's pretty so white. So black, you look like asphalt. Asphalt with eyes. <laughs> Still got to repent. Brother flower, brother <laughs> asphalt. That's you right. both got to repent. Both got to repent. 
take the asphalt and the flour down in water. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, to get the old dirty sins wash off you so you can escape destruction that God is bringing on the world. That's right. Ain't you no know, maybe so about it. God can't lie. That's right. We're telling you what to do to avoid, avoid destruction. Punishment. That's right. To, uh, to avoid punishment. Amen. Hallelujah. It's coming. Hallelujah. 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 It's coming too, brother. It's, it's coming. Oh, Hallelujah. yes. The punish you can hate Hallelujah. this, get mad, amen, get irate, cuss, make all your comments. I absolutely don't care. That, that's right. That's right. The I, destruction of God is coming upon humanity. Oh, yes. Or it take God, and if you want to avoid it now, obey. Obey. The truth of God message. That's right. What did he say? For God has given straight commandment to such as Cain. God has given straight commandment. Straight. Straight commandment. You that repented of your sins and was baptized last night. You're making uh, ready now to avoid destruction. That's right. 89 souls. Yeah. One night. One night. Amen. <laughs> glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. What did he say? For God has given straight commandment. To God has given straight commandment. Straight commandments are for the crooked. That's right. That's right. Everything crooked needs straight commandments. Straight commandments. Because there's a bend in our nature. Oh, yeah. Bend in our nature. Oh, yes. Amen. Sometimes you get a piece of material that's wrinkled. In other words, if it's wrinkled, it's just got a lot of bends in it. Yeah. Lay it on something flat and get an iron and apply steam. That's right. Sometimes you got to take maybe a little water bottle, spray a mist. Spray it. Then take that steam and apply it. That's right. Master steam, but then you get that material, oh, it's all right now. That's right. That's what we do. We take the steam of scripture. Yeah. To put a crease in your life. Amen. Because as long as we got a wrinkle, we ain't getting into the kingdom of God. Won't get you in didn't it. know that? That's right. Get me. I said, long. You better give me the fifth chapter of Ephesians. In Ephesians chapter 5, we'll start at verse 26. Hear me, that human family. Get this bishop. That's right. Mr. Apostle, prophet, <laughs> half right. pint elder, hypocrite, junior deacon. Amen. One eighth by one eighth pastor. That's right. Fake woman preacher. Hmm. Get this. Ephesians chapter 5, we'll start at verse 26. Democrat and Republican politicians, get this. Th that, that's right. Go ahead, man. Every mayor and every man. governor that's on the planet. Hallelujah. You better hear this. That's right. To the Parliament of Europe and to the Congress of America. Hallelujah. Hear this. Hear this. Come on, son. Ephesians chapter 5, we'll start at verse 26. What else? That he might sanctify. You Trump lovers, hear this. That's you right. Biden lovers, you hear this. That's right. Hallelujah. I don't care what politician you love. Democrats are donkeys and Republicans are elements. No Both of you are natural brute beasts. That's right. The Bible says made to be taken and destroyed. Speak evil of the thing. Thank God that they understand not. Amen. Come on, say, what part are you of, Pastor Jennings? Jesus only. <laughs> That's right. I ain't a Democrat, nor a Republican, never have been and never will. Amen. That's why you don't find me switching parties. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, my card is Jesus only. That's right. And Williams is holding my card. Oh, yeah. Come on, say, Jesus only, not in the Bible. That's a lie. That's a lie. The Bible said they saw no man, save Jesus save only. Jesus only. <laughs> Any what is that? That's right. Hey, Amen. I believe Moses and Elijah appeared up in the mountain, and those those around, they saw Jesus' garment, how it began to glisten, and they heard that voice. In the book of St. Matthew. Let's get Bible for Jesus only. St. Matthew chapter 17 and verse 8. They're always jumping on always me jumping about, on something. about something. I'm going to plant your hill so deep in the plant, folks going to think you part of the landscape of your own house. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to plant you down in the scripture. Down. And that's right. Somebody going to think you a yard decoration. <laughs> All right. 
St. Matthew chapter 17, we'll start at verse 7. I'm on the way. And Jesus came and touched them. Jesus came and touched them. And said, Arise and be not and afraid. Get up and don't you be afraid. And when they had lifted up their, eyes, they lift up their eyes, they saw no man. They didn't see no man. Save. Save Jesus, Jesus only. Save Jesus only. That's in the scriptures. That's what I am. I'm Jesus only. Save Jesus only. I'm not Democrat. I'm not Republican. I'm of the Jesus only party. <laughs> That's right. That's why I never have to switch. That's right. Amen. Wonderful, brother. Just give me Lord Jesus. <laughs> That's it. Amen. That's, it. I, I, That's all I want. That's all you want. All right, let's go back to where you were. Back in Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 26. All right. That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. Now, this is what God wants. Thank God for his church. That's right. Get me. He first wants you to be what? That he might sanctify. He want to set you aside, set you apart from everything and everybody. Amen. For him. For him. He first wants you to be sanctified, set apart, set aside, separated. That's right. For him. That's right. Mm -hmm. And cleanse and This it. is a holy sanctified program. Mm. Yes, it is. Yes. Yes, it is. Yeah. After sanctification, what's next? And cleanse it. Come on, say, oh, wait a minute, Pastor Dennis. I thought you cleaned first and sanctified second. You thought wrong. Amen. Let me give you a better understanding. Mm -hmm. When you do laundry, you sanctify them first. <laughs> That's right. Lord God, you sanctify the white clothes from the color clothes. <laughs> That's right. Eh? That's right. Amen. Wonderful. Separate all the white clothes from the colored clothes. That's right. Hey Amen. Honey, go over the husband say, honey, what you doing? I'm sanctifying my laundry. Amen. <laughs> Separate. Separate. I don't want to put these jeans in here with these white clothes because uh, the dye may get on my clothes. And next thing I know, I got a garment that I that's not supposed to be this color. That's right. So I got to sanctify. Sanctify. Separate them. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. Amen. That's what God is doing. That's right. Separate oh, yes. sheep from goats, yeah. wheat from tares. Amen. Separate. Separate. Yeah. That he might sanctify. Come on into the laundry mat. Come to the cleanest. That's right. Glory to God. We want to sanctify you. Oh, yes. Separate you. What did he say here? That he might sanctify. That he may sanctify. And cleanse it. Then cleanse what he sanctified. How? With the washing of With water. With the washing of water. By the word. That's it. That's it. We come bring you the word of the God. Word. Amen. The washing of water. How? By the word. Give me the woman at the well. Let's see what kind of water we use. Yeah. I have to itemize everything in detail. Oh, yes. Washing. Of water. water by the word. By the word. By the word. Like we gotta take the church and apply water to it. That's right. And we use water by the word. By the word. Jesus said. In the book of St. John, chapter 7, we started verse 38. That's what? He that believeth on me. He that believe on me. As the scripture had said. As the word has said. Out of his belly. Out of his belly. Shall flow rivers. Shall flow rivers. Of living water. That's the kind of water we use. Living water. To wash it. That's right. We use life water. <laughs> That's it. Man. Yeah. Go ahead. We use water to give you Hallelujah. life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Life water. That's right. Hallelujah. Lord, living water. Up. Clean, go ahead. pure, go ahead. Strong, go ahead. not polluted. That's right. Not diluted. That's right. Water straight from heaven. That's it. That's it. Yeah. Amen. This program give you water straight mm. from heaven. That's right. Hallelujah. Dr. Jenna, what am I drinking? I'm drinking spirit. That's right. I'm serving you spirit. That's it. I thought you said you're serving me water. That's right. That's right. Let me show you. The, the, the water that I give you is spirit. He that believeth on me as the scripture had said. He that believeth on me as the scripture have said. Out of his belly shall oh, flow rivers. Out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this spake he. This spake he. Spake he. Of the spirit. Of the spirit. Which they that believe on him should receive. That they which shall believe on him. Glory to God shall receive. For the Holy Ghost. 
the Holy Ghost was not yet given. Wasn't yet given. Because that Jesus was not yet glorified. Amen. Jesus wasn't yet glorified. That right. lets you know that the Holy Ghost wasn't given until after his resurrection. That's right. Hallelujah. When he rose. Hallelujah. The third day. Hallelujah. Said all power was given unto me. Given unto me. And hallelujah. And heaven and an earth. That's it. Sent his apostles out to the four corners of the earth right. and told them, go ye into all the world. That's right. Preach the, the gospel, gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that don't believe it, glory to God, shall be damned. And these signs will follow Hallelujah. them that believe. That's right. Hallelujah. So the apostles went out spreading water. Yes, they did. Living water. Living water. For this speaking of the Spirit. That's right. On the day of Pentecost, they was filled with living water. Living water. Mm. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. That's why the Holy Ghost is called. Uh, you better read that again in John. St. And John. then you better give me Matthew, what John said about Jesus. Yes. St. John. He's going to baptize you in. That's right. Yeah, here, good. St. John chapter 7, verses I'm 38 taking and 39. This to show you, we are serving spirit. Spirit. And the spirit that we're serving, which is the presence of God, That's the right. language of God, the understanding of God, the wisdom of God the information of God, the dignity of God, Boy. the infallibleness of God, and the perfection of God. That's right. Hallelujah. We are serving it on the platter of Scripture. That's right. That's right. We want you to drink it. Drink it. That's why he can come in many shapes and many forms, and if you take no water, whatever you put it in, it take on that shape. That's right. Hallelujah. And that same water is fire. Oh, yes. God better title water and God better title fire. And fire. Let me show you both. St. John chapter 7, verses 38 and 39. And then uh, we we'll get what Thank he said you. about John. Amen. Come on. He that believeth on me, as the scripture had said. Uh, he that believeth on me, as the word of God hath said. Out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Rivers will flow from his belly. This spake he of the spirit of God, which they that believe on him should receive. This spake he of the spirit. This spake he of God. That's right. John four twenty four said, "God is the spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth." This spake he of the spirit. This spake he of God. This spake he of Jehovah. This spake he of the Lord. This spake he of Christ. This spake he of Jesus. Which they that believe on him. That they. <laughs> Amen. To drink him. I got to do what? They that believe on him should receive. Hallelujah. He that come to God must believe. Believe. Hallelujah. Taste the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 We'll take God and see that he's good. That's right. That's right. Taste him. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Hallelujah. Taste the Lord. I Taste say. the Lord. And see. That he is good. He is good. He is good. Hallelujah. Go with take God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He come as water. Hallelujah. So you can digest him. That's right. And then he forms in you. That's right. Like you put water into a glass and then the water take on the shape of that glass. That's right. When the Spirit of God come in you, he forms in you. That's it. So the Bible said that Christ may be formed in me. My little children. My little children. Of whom I took birth, birth again. again birth, until, Christ until Christ. Until Christ. Be formed. In you. Christ is formed. And you that you may form around him. That's why he's called living water. You pour water in any container. I don't care how small, how short, how wide, how skinny. The water automatically conforms to that shape. Give me a tall glass of water. Give me a cup of water. Give me a jug. Are you getting the old man? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So God bears the title water, water because his function is to fill. That's on right. the day of Pentecost, they was all 
filled Fear. with the Holy Ghost. They was all filled with living water. Living they water. was all filled with the Spirit of God. That's right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All filled. All filled. They were all filled. With the Holy Ghost. And began to speak with other tongues. And began to speak with other tongues. As the Spirit gave them utterance. Hallelujah. Now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They were filled. filled. That was the function of the Spirit as water. That's right. Now let's see what Jesus said about John. Now in St. Matthew. And then we'll go back to the second chapter of Acts. Now in St. Matthew chapter 3 and at verse 11. Follow me. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. I, John, said I baptize you indeed unto repentance. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I. Stronger than I am. Whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. What is he going to do? He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. And what? And with fire. And the natural water without fire. That's right. When you talk about God, water is fire. That's right. It's talking about the two functions or the two characteristics of God. That's right. Let's show you both functions that happened on the day of Pentecost. Acts chapter 2, we'll start at verse 1. All right. And when the day of Pentecost when was the fully day. come. Hallelujah. Oh, it's hallelujah. Hallelujah. A Pentecost was, was fully come. It came in the fullness. They were all with one accord in they one was place. They all with one accord in one place. In one place. And suddenly, suddenly, there oh. came a sound from heaven. There came a sound from heaven. As of a rushing mighty wind. And what did it do? And it filled all the house where they were sitting. It filled them. That's right. That's right. Filled them. Amen. All the house. Where they were sitting. It doesn't matter how, where that jar or glass is positioned. Hallelujah. You pour water. Hallelujah. It fills it. That's right. So your position. That's right. Don't hinder God from filling you with the Holy Ghost. No, no. On your knees, sitting down, laying down. Amen. Prop down. It doesn't matter. That's right. Your body is ready for the Holy Ghost. That's right. Will you believe him and obey him? Hallelujah. 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 If you're on your knees. Hallelujah. And get tired. Hallelujah. Lay down on the floor. That's right. Get tired on the floor. Ahead, Sit down in the chair. Go ahead. Go ahead. Doesn't matter Go ahead. of your position. No, no. Suddenly. Are you listening? Suddenly. Suddenly. There came a sound from heaven. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, there came a sound from heaven. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Yes, there came a sound from heaven. From heaven. As of a rushing mighty wind. As of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. Then what? And there appeared unto them cloven tongues. And like as a fire. Wait. Hallelujah. There appeared unto them cloven tongues like what? Like as a fire. They were filled. Amen. Then the tongue was like fire. Hold it. Amen. The spirit as water fills. Fills. But when it says fire, fire, it spreads. That's right. And it sat upon each of them. Notice. It filled. Then it starts spreading to each of to them. Each of them. That's right. Each of them. Each of them. And when it got each of them. And they were all filled. They were all with the Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord filled. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All filled. With the Holy Ghost. And began to speak. And began to speak. With other tongues. With other tongues. As the Spirit gave them utterance. So when you have the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Your body. Starts to get filled. Filled. Notice. Hallelujah. It set upon each of them as fire. As fire. Now, this is what happens. Hallelujah. Filled Hallelujah. as living water yeah. in the belly. That's right. Spirit starts dealing with you. That's right. Starts quickening your body. Oh, yeah. And the closer you get to God, oh yes, that living water, Hallelujah, start elevating, Hallelujah, start elevating, Hallelujah, start elevating, Hallelujah. And when it gets to your mouth, 
Hallelujah. That's where the fire is. In fire. Heaven. That's right. And it's spread. That's right. And they all were filled with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. They were all filled with they the Holy filled. Ghost. With the Holy Ghost. And began to speak with other tongues. And began to speak with other tongues. With other tongues. As the Spirit. As the Spirit gave them utterance. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you have the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Like they got it on the day of Pentecost. Hallelujah. You ain't got to try to speak. No, no. You ain't got to help it. That's right. That's right. You ain't got to fake it. Oh, no. You ain't got to go somewhere and practice it. That's right. That's right. Hallelujah. They were all when filled. When fire get a hold of you naturally. Oh, yeah. The power of the fire forces you to talk. That's right. When you got the Holy Ghost. That's right. It'll make you crown. That's right. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. It'll make you crown. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost. They were all filled. With the Holy Ghost. Oh, right, take God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Take they were all filled with the they Holy Ghost. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And began to speak with other and tongues. And began to speak with the Hallelujah. With other tongues. As the Spirit gave them utterance. As the Spirit gave them utterance. Glory to God gave utterance. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You don't have to help it. No, no. Hallelujah. All you got to do is obey it. That's it. And believe it. That's it. And then let God hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let God do the rest. That's right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Drink the water of God. That's it. That's it. Taste the Lord. Taste the Lord. Hallelujah. See that he's good. See that he's good. Hallelujah. Respect God's law. Hallelujah. 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 Subject yourself to the pruning. Hallelujah. Let God prune you. That's it. So you can flourish. That's it. Every oh. chance you have to be pruned, clipped, the wickedness to be removed. Yes. In and out of your temple. That's right. Submit yourself. That's right. Oh, it's painful while you're being pruned. Yeah. Take your eyes off everybody else. That's right. This is why some of you can't be a help to your other brother and your mm. other sister who's struggling because you didn't submit yourself to pruning. That's right. Mm. Any one of your brothers and sisters alive or astray. Oh, yeah. Don't put your foot on their neck. That's right. Pray and ask God to prune their ways. That's right. Hallelujah. I believe Jesus told Peter, mm. Lord, take God when thou art truly converted. Yes. Thanks be unto God. Hallelujah. Then you can strengthen your brother. That's right. That's Remember right. what the book of 2nd Esther declared. Back in 2nd Esther chapter 7 and verse 21. What is it? For God has given straight commandment to such as Cain. Yeah. What they should do to live. What you may do to live. Even as they came. Even as they came. And what they should observe. What they should observe. To avoid punishment. To avoid punishment. We're telling you now by yeah. God's permission. What to do to live. What to do. You that are here in Valdosta, Georgia, God has given you the opportunity, the greatest opportunity you will ever have in this life. That's right. The next greatest opportunity is the coming of the Lord. That's right. But while we're in this life, yes. the greatest opportunity is be able to get right with God. That's it. And that we may know him in the power of his resurrection. Hallelujah. Repent of your sins. Oh, yes. Be baptized in water. Be sorry about being out here for so long. That's right. Wild and foolish and ungodly. Yes. Be baptized in water. In the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. Hallelujah. And let the Lord fill you with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Anybody want to be right with God today and be baptized the right way? In the name of Jesus Christ, stand on your feet, Valdosa. Glory to God. Look at here. Wonderful. Here we go again. We go. <laughs> All of you that are standing, go Hallelujah. to the back. All of you that are standing, go to the back. Hallelujah. 
And remember, Valdosa, we will be starting the new First Church of the Lord Jesus Christ here in Valdosa, Georgia, April 16th, service at 11 a.m. and again at 4 p.m. and the Rose Garden Room. Hallelujah. Look at that. Do you see? That's Do right. you see? Do you not see what I'm talking about? Amen. It's all right, isn't it, Russ? Hallelujah. This is the Lord's story. That's right. In the day like the day, in a day like the day, Amen. all these hundreds and hundreds and hundreds that are pitting, hallelujah, going down in water in the name of Jesus Christ, ready to get on God's side. Amen. We already got a mass congregation here in Valdosa Amen. already. That's right. Amen. That's right. All right. How many we got went to the back to get baptized? We got two brothers? Yeah, we need two now. Amen. We got to get so now we got to have at least two or three or four portable pools yeah. to keep things going. It, it isn't wise to have one portable pool now. Right. We can't do it. We got to have at least two or three or four portable pools. Right. That way we can have at least two or three or four brothers baptized and no one have to wait. That's right. Hey Amen. We want to make that standard now. Whenever we come in town or in a place, have at least three or four portable baptismal pools. Amen. Amen. Because when the Lord come in town with his word, yeah. you know there's some fish and the net going to break. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. That's right. Lord, our God, God's word is in town. Yes. And the net breaks all the time. Amen. I thank God for this. Amen. Amen. I thank God for it. Who gave me the correct time, brother? All right, 2.44. Come on back this evening. Evening session began at 5 o'clock. Hope to see you come on back and get the conclusion of the whole matter. God willing, we hope to see you in two weeks in Augusta, Georgia, hanging out with the former Bishop of Love. <laughs> Every, every time uh, Bishop Williams talk about what they used to call him before he met us, the Bishop of Love. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. We'll be with our brother Bishop Williams and all the saints in Augusta, Georgia. Amen. Well, the, 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 the people just coming from so many areas of the world. Yeah. Amen. So as I said, my mission, I need you to pray for us, your brother, that God give us strength. Yes, because with God's help, with God's help, with God's help, we want to plant several churches per state. Per state. And we want to do it with God's help without a mortgage on one. Wonderful. Amen. Did you check that out for me? Uh, free, what is it, Freeport? All right, Freeport, Texas. Any of my brothers and sisters from Houston, Texas, uh, for you, are you familiar with Freeport, Texas? Any of you? Freeport, Texas. Come on now. Freeport, Texas. Any of you Texas folk familiar with it? You familiar with it? It's about what, 57 or 55 minutes from Houston? What's that? About that? All right. We've been looking for churches in Houston. They're hard to find. Mm. Found the big beautiful church in Freeport, and the price is just right. Wonderful. Yes. Wonderful. My secretary contacted me this morning. She texted to me last night, and I didn't look at my phone till this morning, and then she called me. She said, did you look at it? Did you look at it? Did you look at it? I said, wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> I looked at it. One was 700000 I said, no. That was in another part of uh, Texas, not that far from Houston. Freeport, one big, beautiful place. That was only 200 and something thousand. Looked like, it looked like it was moving ready. Mm. Now, I know some of you are spoiled and want to have everything convenient. But uh, if we can save money and you got to drive 
47 or even an hour away from Houston, I believe the word of God is worth it. Right. So I told her, get on it right now. Amen. Get on it right now and get down there and look at it and FaceTime it back. Let me know what it is. Amen. So I can bid lower than what it is. <laughs> And I want to bid so low until we can buy it cash and Texas don't have a mortgage. Right. All right. Let us all stand. Brother Minister Went will close us out in prayer. Oh, yes. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we yes, thank, you. thank you. Lord, we thank you for your word today. That enlighten our understanding, God, that we may understand that we have to get this thing straight. Yes. Look down upon us, Lord Jesus Christ. Look in our hearts, Lord. Yes. Wherever the errors are, Lord Jesus Christ, I pray we'll remove it. Yes. Let this word take root in our heart today, God. Yes, Lord. Bless our Apostle Pastor Jennings yes, as he preached the word of God, Lord Jesus Christ. What? When we live here, we'll not be the same. We thank you for all that you have done and all you continue to do. Yes, Help us to stay in this way of holiness, Jesus. Yes, Cleanse our mind and our heart, Lord God, yes, Lord. to become like you, God. Yes, Lord. Destroy everything in us that is not like you. Yes, Lord. Forgive us for our sins and our transgression today, God. Yes, Lord. When we live here, God will be a different person. Yes, Lord. We thank you for all that you have done and all you continue to do. Bless this work here in Valdosta, Georgia, and the truth of God. We thank you, Lord God. Whatever we fail from asking you, Lord Jesus, please do not fail to grant unto us. In your name we pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, everybody say, Amen. Amen.